traditional perspective on disease is that they're the result of an abnormality in a single gene. However, in reality, diseases are the product of perturbations in complex interconnected cellular components, like genes, RNA, and DNA. Given this, in order to deepen our understanding of disease etiology, a systems biology approach is needed. More specifically, network medicine is an emerging field that uses the tools of network science to improve treatment, prevention, and diagnosis of diseases. The human interactome is a set of all molecular interactions in a cell at the level of genes, RNA, and proteins. However, the human interactome is not fully complete. The status of it, it contains currently an incomplete protein interactome, showing all of the different protein-protein interactions in a cell. It also contains uh, causal links between diseases and genes. So seen here, two uh, genes on this network are connected if they are both implicated in the same disease. As you can see, the genes form these highly connected clusters or disease modules on the network. So what are the implications of the human interactome? If complete, if we had a complete uh, human interactome, we could use it to identify new disease genes, determine optimal therapeutic targets, and elucidate relationships between seemingly distinct disease types. However, the current human interactome is thoroughly incomplete. It contains networks at the gene and protein level, but it is missing uh, networks at the RNA level. So why are RNA to disease networks important? Well, for starters, uh, unlike the incomplete protein interactome, RNA networks are more comprehensive, owing to the availability of RNA sequence information. Non-coding RNAs in particular, such as microRNAs, account for much of the information encoded in the human genome. MicroRNAs, a type of non-coding RNA, are essential in protein expression through, through post-transcriptional regulation and RNA silencing. Given the importance of microRNAs in disease, the objective of this research was to incorporate microRNA disease network into the human interactome. To do this, we created a network-based microRNA to disease model, and this was in order to examine clustering of microRNAs in terms of diseases, with the goal of identifying putative microRNAs as biomarkers and therapeutics. So here's how we did it. Because there are no experimentally validated direct microRNA to disease connections, we had to predict these associations. To do so, we used four massive data sets, MIRDIP, OMIM, GWAS, and DEG. From these data sets, two bipartite networks were created, microRNA to gene and gene to disease. A bipartite network is one that contains two different types of nodes. These two bipartite networks were aligned along their set of shared genes. And this was in order to form a tripartite network of microRNA to gene to disease. Next, I simplified this tripartite network to, a, to the uh, final desired microRNA disease network using statistical inference. To do this, what I did was for every microRNA and disease node, I compared the probability of these being connected if the network was random, compared to the actual number of shared nodes that it had in the network. And I used these values in order to compute a z-score. I assigned all microRNA to disease edges as the z-score and eliminated all edges with a z-score less than three. Now, in order to gain more insights from this microRNA disease bipartite network, I created two projections. In the disease, uh, disease network projection, two diseases are connected if they're targeted by the same microRNA. In the microRNA projection, two microRNAs are connected if they both target the same disease. Next, uh, to further analyze these network projections and gain more insights, I looked at several metrics. These include diameter, density, clustering coefficient, and modularity. To visualize the networks, I use Gephi software. So now let's move on to the results uh, of the mi microRNA bipartite disease network. So in order to gain a sense of clustering, which is important because it tells us what the most important microRNA disease modules are, I calculated edge weight and degree distributions. Now, in the degree distribution, you can see that the uh, distribution follows the power law. And in network science, this means that the network is a scale-free network. 
What this means is that the network will be characterized by distinctive clustering, which in turn will tell us microRNA disease modules. If we look at the edge weight distribution, you can see that there is a small minority of edges with a very high weight, and this indicates a strong microRNA to disease association. Now, if we look at, uh, similar to what we saw quantitatively, we can also see visually in this Gephi image of a disease-disease projection in microRNA space. The different colors correspond to modularity classes as determined by a modularity algorithm. As you can see, there is very distinctive clustering in this network. And more importantly, each of these, disease, each of these uh, modules on the network correspond to individual diseases. For example, cardiovascular diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, and thyroid diseases. In stark contrast to the disease projection in microRNA space, in gene space, the disease projection has far less clustering and is far more homogenous. The microRNA microRNA projection also has far less distinctive clustering than the disease projection. And what this shows is that many microRNAs target a wide range of diseases, causing microRNAs to have overlap in the diseases that they target. This graph here, or this table here, uh, summarizes some of the main metrics of the different projections I was looking at. The two main takeaways from this table is first, uh, modularity. So as you can see, the disease projection in microRNA space had the highest modularity and was able to be divided most easily into sub-networks. In contrast, the disease projection in gene space had the lowest modularity. So also supported, uh, in following along this trend, is the clustering coefficient. As you can see here, it is very high, whereas in the microRNA projection, it's much lower, and that shows that there was less clustering in that network. So going along with this trend of specificity uh, in the disease projection of microRNA space, if you look here, you can see plotted here is the, uh, is the correlation between the microRNA disease strength versus the degree. And you can classify the microRNAs into two groups, disease-specific, meaning they target a few diseases with high specificity, versus pleiotropic, targeting multiple different diseases weekly. Seen here are the top eight microRNAs identified by our model as being pleiotropic, and seven microRNAs identified as being disease-specific. So to further examine these disease-specific microRNAs, as they are of significance as potential biomarkers and therapeutics, four of these microRNAs have been validated in prior literature as being potential biomarkers and therapeutics, experimentally confirmed to be linked to diseases like Huntington's, prostate and liver cancer, hypertension, and esophageal cancer. More importantly, our model was able to identify two new putative biomarkers and therapeutics. MicroRNA 523 was identified as being uh, correlated to adrenal diseases, 937, and dermatological and ophthalmological diseases. MicroRNA 339 was identified as being linked to congenital neurological diseases. And this is interesting because in prior literature, 339 has only been examined as a potential uh, target for cancers. So this research has identified a new possible application for this microRNA. To conclude, we have created a microRNA disease network to incorporate and make a more comprehensive human interactome. When diseases are plotted in microRNA space, there are more distinct disease modules formed. Furthermore, our model has identified eight possible pleiotropic microRNAs that are likely master gene regulators and should be further investigated to better understand cellular function. Our model has also identified seven disease-specific microRNAs, four of which have been validated in prior literature, two of which are new targets, and a third was identified as for a new disease application. So what are the importance of these results? Um, this research has shown the importance of including microRNAs into the human interactome. This uh, model has created a method of classifying microRNAs as either pleiotropic and disease-specific, and identifying potential microRNA drug targets, both new microRNA drug targets as well as new applications for existing microRNA targets. Now, this research will enhance the drug discovery process by allowing uh, microRNA targets to reach the consumer market quicker and to enable um, more effective and safer therapeutics. 
Future research will experimentally validate the identified microRNA targets as well as continue expanding the network.